Institute for Human-Centered Design logo on a white background. Footage from the Institute for Human-Centered Design's Hub Week Open Doors event in Boston is interspersed with photos, graphics, and interviews featuring current and former IHCD staff, board members, colleagues, and user experts. If you want to have a really innovative idea that's even even getting to a point where you might have a completely disruptive new product or market, you need to work with people on the outer edges of the spectrum of age and ability because I can guarantee, and I saw this over and over again, like years of doing this here, if you create a solution that works for those people, it's not like you're going to leave out the people in the middle. It's going to work for everyone. Variation in human ability is ordinary, not special, and affects nearly all of us at some point in our lives. Design is powerful and profoundly influences our day-to-day -day interactions with the world, including our sense of confidence, comfort, and control. The Institute for Human-Centered Design is a Boston-based nonprofit committed to expanding opportunity and enhancing experience for people of all ages, abilities, and cultures through excellence in design. IHCD has pioneered not just accessibility, but accessibility of the environment, of the mind, of the emotions within the American context. It's not just about buildings, it's about people. Being able to access the city, access services, access products, regardless of their age, gender, ability, social background. Even so many years after the passage of the ADA, we know that environments are still being designed that are not accessible, there are existing environments that are not accessible. But we know that that's not all that's needed, that we want to take it that extra step or many extra steps to making things enjoyable and livable and manageable for everybody. The term human-centered design is a simple statement of our philosophy. We are deeply invested in the international inclusive design movement as educators and as practitioners in the physical, digital and service environments. So today we are showcasing a prototype of eye tracking glasses. One camera watches your pupil movements and one camera watches your field of view to showcase how we can use this in our contextual inquiry research to um, uncover behavior of the user that we don't necessarily get through verbal feedback and through observation. We've been working with the Musée du Louvre in France, uh, as well as the Musée du Louvre in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we are here to present two new experiences we've been creating. One is a tactile interpretation of Vincent van Gogh's self-portrait to my friend Paul Gauguin. We are, are collaborating with the EHTD to bring accessibility to the museums, because museums are the kind of place where you, where you want to bring all of the people together. There's a real opportunity, a real need for those of us who, who have limitations to be heard. You want some more customers? You want people to ride your train? You want people to come to your museum? This is what you can do to draw in more people and to make it available so that we're not you know, 19, 19th century sitting in the attic. IHCD seeks to maximize our impact through extensive global collaborations, and we initiate strategic campaigns we think are important. We have a current priority to infiltrate the DNA of Boston's innovation economy with inclusive design and research with a broad base of user experts. Access and quality, inclusion, diversity, all these things are promoted by good design, and it applies in all these areas, whether it's your cultural visits, your healthcare, uh, your living, your day-to-day -day living, your education, I mean, every aspect of life would be affected by design. I mean, without our expertise, design isn't going to work. But we need to be full partners in the process. Engaging user experts gives you this constant stream of observations, of data, of insights. I would argue that there's not only like a social imperative, but there's also a cost imperative. Doing this kind of research up front enables you to identify interactions, problems, and other issues that, if they're caught further down the development cycle, could cost a lot of money and a lot of time to remediate. You get a chair right for a back pain sufferer, you get it right for everyone. You get a car right for older people. 
you get it right for everyone. The work people like Valerie Fletcher, Elaine Ostroff have been doing for decades, it's becoming mainstream. We're moving from margins to mainstream. And we end up designing not just for people, we end up designing with them, which is incredibly important. Formerly known as Adaptive Environments, the Institute for Human-Centered Design was founded in 1978. More than four decades on, IHCD has cultivated a global footprint of colleagues, innovators, collaborators, and strategic partners, conspiring to redraw the boundaries of equitable, inclusive access and experience for all. For more information about our education, consulting, research, and design services, please visit humancenteredesign.org.